Welcome back. I am Siobhan Danger Darwish, and this is the first episode of Cultivating Cannabis, which we're really excited because I have my sisters with me. Uh, this is Miss Sloan Reed and Cara Cordoni, and um, today we are going to talk about our friend Dennis Perone and how he was incredibly instrumental in not just growing the cannabis, but growing the cannabis revolution. And so cultivating cannabis in his sense. He was a true leader of the cannabis revolution. Um, he was the author of the 215. This is huge, huge things and huge movements that he made in, in this revolution. And so we have invited our dear friend, Cara Cordoni, over to talk a little bit about um, her experiences and how she was really instrumental in helping Dennis to see what he created in the, in the final years of his life. He got to experience cannabis being legalized and shared. And so we're ecstatic to have her on and I will hand it over to her. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you, both of you sisters who are very inspiring. Um, and it was a pleasure to take you to Dennis's Castro Castle yes. uh, to meet him and enjoy him uh, while he was here. Uh, for those who might not be in California or know their cannabis history, Prop 215, which passed in 1996, was the first law that gave patients the right to both use and cultivate cannabis and that passed here in California. And as far as I know, that was the first law worldwide that broke the hold that prohibition had on us since 1937 and the Marijuana Tax Act, which effectively made marijuana illegal. And before that, it had actually been a well-used medicine in our own pharmacopoeia. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, interesting history and politics involved in how that came to pass. What's really beautiful is that what motivated Dennis uh, was love. Uh, you know, he was a businessman. He, he came back from Vietnam uh, with two pounds of cannabis, and he started distributing that. And he really enjoyed uh, sharing cannabis with people, patients, and, uh, um, you know, people that might not know that they were patients. Uh, in the end of his life, he felt very passionately that all use is medical use, when we recognize it or not. Um, so what happened was he, he came back with this. He was distributing cannabis in San Francisco. Uh, he was a gay man, and he found himself at the head of the gay rights movement and at the head of the cannabis friends and lovers and neighbors were getting sick with AIDS and suffering and dying, um, and that the use of this medicine really alleviated their suffering. And in particular, what pushed him into the legislative process, I would say, uh, is that he had the love of his life, a young man, Jonathan West, and Jonathan did develop uh, HIV and AIDS, and cannabis helped him live longer. He was able to eat, he was able to thrive in the face of the wasting syndrome that often comes with AIDS. And when Jonathan died in 1990, um, Dennis wanted him to be remembered and he worked on Proposition P as a memorial to love, to love. So, you know, Dennis, uh, we think of him from a, a cannabis perspective. Uh, a lot of people don't know he was a Vietnam veteran. I think most people know he was gay. Uh, and the other thing that Dennis focused on is that to medicate people, to give them medicine isn't enough. We also need to feed them. So uh, I love the story that he used to fill his pockets with joints and $5 bills. $5 bills on one side, joints on the other side. And when he encountered people, he'd ask them, well, what do you need? And he'd give them a joint. Or if they needed a meal, they'd give them a $5 bill. Uh, if they needed both, he'd give them both. And that's how he rolled. That's how Dennis rolled. It, he, we, we did that that day in San Francisco. We go to visit Dennis and we say, Dennis, what do you want to do? And he wants to get on his cart, go into the Castro, give out joints. The, even to his dying day, you know? It, it was such a joyful activity, really. Once you um, participate, 
you know, uh, finding that it brings so much joy to people. And, and he was very concerned with people that don't have access. Uh, he worked very hard on Prop 215 to, to make it fairly broad. And, um, you know, his concerns with the new legalization movement was that it, it was going to negatively impact low income patients um, and also small farmers. And so, you know, getting out on Castro Street and or on the market and, you know, on Market Street or in the Tenderloin and giving people a little bit of cannabis, a joint or two, that can profoundly change their day or their week. Um, and that spreading of joy, you, you, you could just see how rewarding it was for, for us and for him. And, uh, and we need to make sure that we still have that going forward, the opportunity to, to share compassionately of this medicine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit of some of the things that you got to do with Dennis uh, to kind of show him or, you know, uh, have him experience what he, what, what he was the catalyst for? Yeah. So um, my business partner, Laura Costa, was actually ironically the person that took me to meet Dennis. I grew up like 15 minutes walking distance away um, and I spent a lot of time very near the Castro castle where he lived, but I hadn't actually uh, met him or seen the castle. And so Laura, who's, uh, from up in Humboldt, uh, brought me there and that was about a couple years ago and started, we started arranging to make sure that he could attend the many cannabis conferences and, uh, happenings that were happening in the Bay area. Dennis was Love. and he loved getting out and being recognized. I mean, we, we would roll Dennis, I think it was at the New West Summit in particular, people would come and get on their knees next to his wheelchair and, and weep on his lap because of the relief that they themselves experienced from having access to cannabis and often for their loved ones. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it's easier for us to have that experience when we see someone we love suffering and seeing them get that relief. So people would just be profoundly appreciative. We got him out to the New West Summit, uh, to the Emerald Cup, uh, gosh, to I think some events. And he would become energized and in light, like enlivened and uh, connect with people who already knew him. And then there'd be that bunch of folks that had heard of him, but didn't really know him, and they'd get to be with him. And you could see, you know, Dennis had that beautiful capacity to profoundly affect those who met him and, and connected with him. Uh, a kind of grace that I believe came from his dedication to compassion and love and his resistance to, you know, greed and materialism uh, in, in, in a culture and an economy that really pushes that on us. It allowed him to have a, a lightness and um, an impact that is kind of rare in my experience. I thought that it was beautiful, even just walking down the Castro um, with Dennis, how many people came up and were like, oh my gosh, it's you. And he was just smiling and like, you know, it, how rewarding it must be for him to have done such amazing things in the cannabis world and have gratitude and love what you put out, I feel like you get back. And he definitely got back all of the love and compassion that he put out in the world. And I think that just seeing how positively he spread compassion, it's like, he was a role model to me. I want to like spread as much compassion that he did because of the way that people were so grateful to him. It was like one of the most magical moments I thought. I love to hear you say that Sloan, because there is, you know, this intention, we have that we can still introduce people to Dennis. Uh, you've had a direct experience of him and you are now the light bearer to introduce people to Dennis and to your own brand of, of love and compassion. Uh, but my, my, you know, while I've grieved uh, profoundly and, and there's still waves of, of grief um, I also feel very uplifted and excited 
to continue introducing people to Dennis through the calendar that we're putting out, um, the compassion calendar that we had started to support him during his life, uh, and through every form of communication, sharing quotes and images and stories and uh, the broadcast like this, uh, because he does have the ability to continue to inspire and impact and spread that message of love and compassion. Uh, Absolutely. So, you know, being able to continue to cultivate that passion and that love for the medication and continue on, you know, these, these, um, leaders of the end of the of the revolution who really <laughs> stood out there and got shot i mean dennis was shot he was arrested twice. stalked by twice shot you know he was stalked by the by the by the federal government i mean it was a lot you know i mean they really tried to keep this man down but he continued to rise up and and cultivate that love and 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 through that grow the really true understanding of cannabis that this is a medication and it really ultimately needs to go to everyone who is in need. And I think that that was one of the biggest things that Dennis lived to see. I really had an incredible time getting to know him and love him and be a part of this revolution. Thank you. Yes, I think it was an honor. It's an honor to know you lovely ladies and it was an honor to meet him. And I feel like meeting him and knowing about him and hearing about him, you get a piece of his compassion and love and it just, you spread it throughout the world. And I think that's what he really wanted was from what I understood. He wanted his compassion and light to be transferred into another person and then us transfer it into another person and it'll just spread. Cultivating. And I think that that... Yeah, and I think that it having the cannabis world in that is so beautiful because it's such a lovely, compassionate plant. <laughs> really quickly before we end here, do you want to tell us a little bit about the calendar? Because I know that's something really exciting coming out soon here. Yes. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, it's the compassion calendar, Dennis Perone, in this uh, first time that we're doing it, it is... Uh, Women of Compassion. Uh, it will be coming out in February, uh, so I'll keep you posted on how to see it yourself. Um, and it, it features 14 women in cannabis, all Northern California, diverse women, uh, and we also include historical snippets. So there is um, a lot of uh, knowledge that you can get from uh, each month as well as bios of the ladies, a bio of Dennis. It's super beautiful. Uh, and all the money is gonna go to Dennis's end of life costs, um, his memorial, uh, getting ready for the next calendar, which is uh, gonna be all dudes at Dennis's request. And, <laughs> and that's it, but it's coming out soon. And uh, we hope that you'll check it out. It's really, truly beautiful. And, and one of the maybe the thing I've done in my life that I'm the most proud of. So I look forward to putting it out in the world. We look forward to seeing it. So thank you for all of your efforts and your time put into this. Uh, it was truly a labor of love. I have stood by while you were doing it and I'm just in awe that you made this all come together. I'm really excited to see all the women and um, I'm just really grateful to you both for being my sisters and I love you and let's continue to uh, spread the word and thank you guys so much for joining us on the first episode of Cultivating Cannabis, a Grow Sisters multimedia production with myself, Siobhan Danger Darwish, this hottie with her cute new haircut, Sloan Reed, and this fantastic Cara Cordoni. Bye guys. <laughs>